thank you, uh, Dr. Binetto, for your uh, very detailed presentation. And now it is the turn of uh, Dr. Andrea Marcelli, who is a malware research engineer at Cisco Talos Intelligence Group, who received the PhD from Politecnico di Torino in Computer and uh, Control Engineering in 2019. Dr. Marcelli, it is your turn. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for having me. Unfortunately, I don't have very nice slides as my colleagues, so uh, <laughs> let's go straight to the point. So my name is Andrea Marcelli. I did a PhD in machine learning and computer security. Uh, I did graduate on September, September 19, and currently working in Cisco Dallas, which is a Cisco Threat Intelligence Group. So a couple of words about my PhD and then about what I'm doing today and some directions for who is going to do the PhD in the future. So I did the PhD with Professor Squillero, whose field is about optimization techniques, but it did switch to machine learning a few, a few years ago. So we basically did start studying machine learning together. It was a very nice journey. Um, we did some research in computer security and hardware security, but I would say that the research I'm mostly proud of is about um, the detection in, um, for new malware samples in a very scalable environment. Because the problem is that today you have so many samples that you cannot process them in a super accurate way. You need a way to do some triage. You need a way to select those samples that you really want to analyze in a, in a deeper way. And so scalability is the keyword. So we did develop a framework, a system to, to scalably analyze and select those samples, provide detections for those who were not covered. We did this with Android malwares in cooperation with a company in the south of Spain called Ispaset. So I also spent some time over there. I went a few times in Spain. I did took part in several conferences, and at the end of my journey, on my PhD journey, I also managed to release a tool called the Agent, which was quite a successful tool. Uh, it, it's a tool to provide coverage to create signatures for new malware samples, for new Android malware samples in, a, in an automatic way. And I did present that tool in Las Vegas at DEF CON, which is quite an uh, important conference in the security world. Regarding what I'm doing now, currently, I work in, um, in Cisco Talos. I'm in the malware research team. So basically, what we are doing day to day is to study the threat landscape, to study the evolution of the threat landscape, and try to uh, apply all the recent researches in order to improve the detections. So I would say there is not so much different the difference from what I did during the PhD. So I was very, very, very good luck to find this job. And also in my sub team, we all have the PhD. So I was again, a kind of luck to find other people with the similar experience. But luckily we all have a different knowledge in different fields. So we are very complementary one to each other. And we, we're really doing a great job, I would say. Um, we are also working with universities, uh, in particular here in south of France with uh, Eurocom. And so we have some academic collaborations too, also, although the academic research is not the primary goal for us. So I would like to conclude talking about three directions that I would like to give to, to students who want to start the PhD. The first of all is that PhD, from my point of view, is less standardized than other university programs. So compared to bachelor's and master's, is is way very less standardized, which means uh, we have PhD with different lengths, different countries, uh, different schools, different PhD schools, different professors. And this means that the experience of each doctorate is kind of unique. So it's very hard. What it turns out is that it's, it's very hard and generate confusions to other people who are not in the academia world to understand what actually a PhD is and what actually brings. So it's your um, effort, it's mandatory that you really explain what did you gain with the PhD. 
but it's your call. It's not uh, the other, do not expect other people to understand. You have to explain. The second point is that PhD for me is a kind of investment that is, is something that you do for yourself, for your knowledge, for your career, um, in case you want to continue in, in, in the industry. Otherwise, if you want to stay, of course, in the academia, it's a kind of mandatory step. So keep in mind that it may not bring some immediate advantages. So, for example, if you go into a, to work in a company afterwards, you not expect to have such a high, super high salary just because you did the PhD. Uh, but from my point of view, uh, you have to make it to work and you, make, and you have to make it valuable for the others. So you have to prove that you really understood something else and that you really learned something more than the others. And um, last suggestion is define your expectations. If you want to do the PhD, define what you really want to learn, what you want to study, what, which is your achievement that you want to, to achieve. And then understand the environment around you. That is, understand which are the expectations from the professor, which are the expectations from the doctoral school, and try to find... Uh, and try to see if there is a, um, a, a join point, if, if, to see if there is an intersection. And if that exists, you have a deal and you can go on. Otherwise, feel free, really feel free to, to, to see if other, other PhDs, maybe in other countries, may also be interesting for you. So do not limit yourself. Try to explore as much as possible. Try to talk with other people. And that's all. If you have any questions, you have my email here, marcelli.andrea at outlook.it. Otherwise, place them in the Q&A afterwards.